Well, hello, hello, dear Pisces, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for choosing me to walk you through the planetary energies of the upcoming year of 2024. If you like this video, I please ask you to help me and share, like, subscribe to my channel. These are all for free, but will greatly help this video to be put out by the algorithm. I would like to put forward as always that this is going to be most uh, accurate for those of you with Pisces rising and uh, but you can watch it for your Pisces sun and Pisces moon as well but those are going to be different aspects such as the sun is going to be the uh, career aspect of your life whereas the moon is more about your internal feelings emotional well-being your home your property situation etc so yes the most accurate is for uh, the rising pisces ascendant sign uh, so you don't if you don't know what your uh, rising sign please highly recommend you to go to the description box and head over to my website where you can cast your chart it's always good to know what is your rising sign what is your moon sign and where if you have maybe a stellium like a cluster of planets mm -hmm. which sign or and which house does that take place because you can watch it for that too so if you have like let's say a Virgo a stellium you can watch the Virgo video you as well because that will also be relevant for you okay so let's begin uh, the year uh, I, I like to put it forward that I have timestamps I made times timestamps down below as well so if you would like to uh, just jump from one chapter to the other you may well do so Okay, so the year will, so let's see the big players first, uh, the chapters. So I will talk about the Earth Grand Trine, which will take place uh, on the 1st of January. And then I will talk about Jupiter, of which uh, Jupiter is the greatest benefic and uh, takes substantial time in Taurus as well as in Gemini this year. So good for us. This is two areas of our lives. We will be blessed by Jupiter. Then I will talk about Saturn in Pisces, which is extremely important for you since it is taking place. It is taking place in your sign, uh, giving you some extra work and then Jupiter and Uranus conjunction it is very important that is the most important aspect of the year everyone is already talking about it only happens once every 14 years and the nodes are staying in Aries and Libra these are the points of karma the north and the south node are triggered by the eclipses so we need to know about our karmic destiny too of course, Mercury, as usual, is going to be retrograde three times this year, all of them in fire sign. And then I kept the best for last, Pluto's ingress, a second ingress to Aquarius. Um, yeah, that's exciting for you too, as it for everybody else and as for the whole humanity collectively. Okay, so let's begin with the Earth Grand Trine. So uh, this is a very good configuration to have a New Year resolution that is actually this time around you can actually manifest. And it's if you follow my steps, then I can guarantee you that by the end of the year you will achieve it. Uh, that's because uh, we need to use the planetary energies. And you know how they say if we begin something with a certain type of energy. The, in each beginning, there is the end as well. So, well, this is a very good beginning, I shall say. So uh, why not? So decide what it is that you want to achieve. And uh, the sun in Capricorn, Jupiter in Taurus, and the moon in Virgo, all of the Earth signs, they're going to come up in a beautiful um, Earth Grand Trine configuration and make your New Year resolution with that in mind. These solid signs will help you achieve your goal, what you set out to do. And once you set your mind in something, you will be able to pursue it, not to give it up. 
you will have a keen eye for detail with that moon in Cap um, moon in Virgo and you will be practical enough to know the know-how and with the sun in Capricorn uh, that will illuminate your path in the 11th house of long-term goals and wishes your ambition your perseverance will have reached whatever you set out to do so this as I said this will activate your 11th your third and your seventh houses so have practically really anything in mind anything that is um, good for communication or maybe partnering collaborating but the 11th house where your uh, where the sun is uh will uh it will uh, it, it will help you bring about any long-term goals and social economical goals that you might have in mind. So good luck with that. Then let's talk about Jupiter in Taurus. Jupiter has been in Taurus since this year, uh, May. So you already have some idea how he has brought you some blessings, some abundance, some some wealth, uh, some growth in your third house. And so probably you have expanded. And if you haven't already, you still have another five months till Jupiter moves into your fourth house. So you have a chance to expand your social contacts, to increase the flow of communication, studies, trips, administrative tasks, reports, business and commercial transactions, marketing, IT, PR, education, teaching, all of these are bringing very, very good results. You will have more access to social media, more sales, expanding your client base. Well, only if you have a client based business than, than uh, what you're interested in. It's very good for your own business because this is the house of self-made wealth. This is the house where you can, due to your excellent skills, you can create some wealth. So you can bring a good teacher who helps doing your website or driving marketing languages you will definitely have more confidence in your business and you will reach a wider audience uh, contacts and communications are expanded relationships with siblings and neighbors will improve your local environment conditions will improve and you will gain some new friends some new mates some new teammates existing ones will be strengthened with positive influence and of course if you are a teacher yourself and marketer or work with social media or website Jupiter will even further help you so wherever Jupiter is this is very important uh, for you because Jupiter is your ruler planet and so Jupiter naturally rules your first house and your tenth house um so Therefore, you become in the Jupiter being in the third house, you become very intellectual this year, maybe interested in literature, education, science, uh, loving travels and a dynamic way of living. This is very beneficial for contracts, for short trips. Maybe you acquire a new vehicle. Uh, you're excellent. Um, you make ex excellent moves in social media. Uh, your communication is excess even further. You have a strong ambition to build your career. You might end up having some social achievements, some popularity, some opportunities in your career. Uh, you can acquire this year a very powerful position in society. Uh, you will end up definitely having good relationships with your authority figures because you are so dedicated to your career. Uh, you become very respected in your society um, and an excellent specialist in your professional field. You are also very ambitious and uh, this is an auspicious uh, aspect to have if you have uh, your own business as well. Then Jupiter in May, end of May, will move, move into your fourth house, which is the house of home, family, properties. So now uh, Jupiter will bring abundance and can create some wealth and wisdom uh, that is uh, everything that is connected to home and family. So there will be a lot of family support coming your way, especially from mother, uh, or maybe there will be some improvement from your mother's life. You can increase your family. So if you want an addition to your family, this is the time to have it, okay? Or simply maybe just your situation in family can improve. You might end up acquiring a property or you might end up going into the property business, which is going to be very good for you. 
If you're asking for a citizenship, this is the time to be approved, uh, resolve some emotions, some inattention, some psychosomatic issues, or simply maybe you're just feeling very happy at home. When Jupiter was in my fourth house, I have moved to a different place, uh, which was so amazing, so beautiful, that I had to ask my friends to pinch me to make sure that I wasn't dreaming. And every Everyone was envious at me. So then let's talk about Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which will happen end of April. So that's still and um, still when Jupiter in your third house in Taurus, uh, which is going to be like a sudden opportunity, a sudden advancement, a, a, a surprising lucky encounter uh, that will bring you growth in third house matters, like in communication, media, social media, uh, marketing. Uh, those of that I talked about whilst Jupiter was in your third house. Uh, so these are going to be auspicious sudden opportunities that may come from your local environment and present themselves in your house of skills, communication, trips, neighbors, siblings, close relatives, and will bring you some uh, innovation, some, um, some, uh, some advancement, some fast growth, in this area as well. So uh, this sounds really, really good. And this is the aspect of the year, don't miss it. It's going to happen between the 18th and the 26th of uh, April. Right, let's talk about Saturn. Saturn has been in your first house ever since uh, this year, March, and is going to stay there till 26. Saturn is a different energy from Jupiter. It uh, does not bring expansion, it does bring some, scarcity, it does bring some hard work, it does bring contraction, uh, consolidation as well, hard work, a lot of extra effort where you have to take, um, have to go the extra mile. Saturn likes to demolish anything that does not have a sturdy foundation and anything that is built in inauthenticity. First and foremost, I suggest you to have a checkup. Uh, especially if you are above 30 or 35, even before Saturn enters your sign, but this is too late for that. Saturn is already in your sign. Um, Saturn is suppressing the planet uh, or suppressing the area, you know, the point. Um, and the first house is your physical body. Okay, so it dries the body out a little bit. You will feel your age, uh, you will feel your bones, uh, you will feel not so vital as uh, you used to do before. Uh, this could mark a time for some of you, not for all of you, for some of you when chronic illness may strain your vitality, your physical body, and especially Pisces can really exhaust your immune system. So just do some lymphatic massages and make sure that you give what uh, it needs to be done for your immune system. Uh, for some of you, this could be a time when problems with the bones come up and the structure of the body because uh, that is ruled by Saturn. So be careful, do not overtax your body. Now, Saturn can give you more discipline on the positive side because uh, there, this is now a new cycle for you. For the next 28 years that you begin and that has to come through your own efforts okay so saturn will open doors for you but you will have to work really hard um, to 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 make those new beginnings and the results however those results are going to be very long lasting so choose with good care what you have this year in your mind and the next. Saturn will touch the between the third and the 19th degree this year. So have a look if you have your ascendant between those degrees and Saturn will go up and down. Uh, I mean, you know, it's going to go retrograde of back and forth. I mean, not up and down. And so uh, whatever you begin this year, when Saturn will pass your ascendant degree, it gives you the results, the, uh, the rewards for the next 15 to 20 years to come. So this is fantastic, uh, although it does not feel fantastic when Saturn is in our first house because, um, you know, Saturn will really test your faith. Uh, so you have to make sure that you keep, keep your spirit high. And even after slow and delayed results, because Saturn gives 
its rewards after very hard work, after repeated efforts only. So if things are not working out straight away or not fast, then don't lose your, uh, your enthusiasm. Look after your mental health. And when you feel that despite all of your effort, nothing seems to work out, just remember what I said, that this is the time and things are a little bit slower because uh, you see, you have to think how long term you're making foundation for your new life for a very long term for the next 28 years so of course that cannot happen overnight okay so you needn't worry this is just the nature of saturn makes you very hard it makes you put extra efforts but the results are going to be very long lasting with saturn we always 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 think long term First, you have to build a very strong foundation, a new structure of the new cycle that you're just about to begin. So this is going to be the phase in your life and you are going to be more introverted, a little bit less social. Might You might feel a little bit lonely as well. Well, it depends on other aspects of your chart. I don't see your other charts, uh, but there is this is a possibility. Since the path of your life is changing, people also will be changing around you, okay? Relation that seems to be important not so important anymore. Some of those relations may dissipate, especially those ones who are not supportive of your new brand, new mission in your life. Relationships may be tested now, and often the only relevant ones are going to stay. So due to this, you might feel a little bit lonelier, a little bit more somber, maybe a little bit depressed. Uh, you will want to bury yourself even more uh, into your work. Uh, but don't worry about that either, because then with a new cycle, new people are going to come. And once, when when you reminisce about this a year or a couple of years down the line, you will understand why this had happened because uh, those people are not serving you anymore and they don't serve they, they, they don't have place in your new life anymore. If you, even if you lose your jobs and you end up having to move somewhere else, please have faith in the universe because that is guiding you to the right direction. And you will be ever so grateful when you look back a few years down the line. Remember what I said about Jupiter in the fourth house? It is a possibility that you will end up moving somewhere. So it is important, try not to resist, impose your will on those changes. Uh, it is pointless because you can't fight Saturn and Saturn will make it even harder for you. So just keep working really hard and don't expect immediate results. Now you are taking to the right path. And even though if it seems a little hard, just remember that you are building the strong foundation for the next 30 years to come. It is a very good time to drink less alcohol, to do some uh, workout discipline, uh, to start going to the gym, uh, to have those lymphatic massages. Keep your body warm because a Saturn dries out the body and keeps the body cold as well. So you will not like that. Uh, Saturn will make you feel very cold. Uh, meditation and mental health support is really beneficial during this time as well. You might look and you might feel a little older, especially if you are over 40. Uh, so, you know, exercise will help with that because it does give you more energy, even though, you know, well, we know that exercise is good for us. And so good luck with all that and get excited really because you are creating a brand new path for you for the next 30 years to come. Okay, let's talk about the Jupiter-Saturn cycle. Uh, so that began in 2020, uh, 20th of December. So maybe think back on uh, what new projects, what new endeavors you began around that time, because now this is coming to the first stages of manifestation. Uh, this is going to be uh, happening between, you know, between all the way till be the beginning of March. So the beginning of the uh, of the year, Jupiter and Saturn will come to a sextile. So this will show your project, your plan, your endeavor will show the first sprouts, a little growth might happen, some initial impulses of light in your project, in your business. Uh, so that sounds really good. But okay, so then don't get too excited. <laughs> don't get too excited because towards the end of the year, Jupiter and Saturn will come into a square aspect. Um, as they are, you know, as the, as Jupiter moves into the Gemini, into Gemini, then 
it will come to a square aspect from Saturn. Um, I've also got to say this is a very long term project. So Jupiter Saturn cycles, they last for 20 years. So everything is very long term for you now. <laughs> And uh, so this is a very long term project. So uh, this is going to be when Jupiter and Saturn come into the square aspect end of August all the way till the 25th of December. There's going to be three hits. Uh, August, the first one, around October, the second one and Christmas Eve, uh, Christmas Day is going to be the third one. And so this will be the first challenge, the opening square, uh, when things feel a little bit uncomfortable, there's going to be a reality check to your plan, some cleaning up needs to be done, some challenge is coming uh, um, your way, which is coming from, uh, yeah, it's coming from you actually, <laughs> because Saturn is in your first house. Um, out of all the hits, the second one will make you sweat the most, and the third one will resolve for better or worse. Now, this is cosmic conflict between expansion and contraction, okay? So just become comfortable with the uncomfortable and uh, think before your next step, plan everything out, have plan A, B, and C. That's what Saturn likes to do. Make small plans and lay out one brick at a time. Just remember, this is a, a long-term plan. Rome wasn't built in a day, so you don't have to do it overnight either, okay? So that is going to be... Uh, you will have still 17 more years to go to close the cycle. So some of your businesses may close door during this uh, uh, transit or that plan may come to an end because it's going to be too much challenge coming up. Or, But some of yours might be just streamlined, cleaned up a little bit. And you have to think about how, what steps you have to take in order to move forward. Now, Pluto will be also on that degree. And so Pluto always intensifies everything. And, um, you know, it will do some unearthing. Um, so it will bring us something to the service that you were unaware of. So that might not feel so comfortable. So what is the plan that you could have began in 2020? It could have been any plan, any project, any business um, that requires solitude, like a research, for example, or anything that uh, asks you to work behind the scenes, a venture about your health, for example, or something to do with healing or hospitals, uh, maybe getting rid of an addiction. Uh, it must be a, it could be a business in connection with hidden institutions such as hospitals, prisons, research laboratories. Um, it could be a business or plan or, or a project endeavor that is connected to faraway lands over the ocean. Uh, so that type of business or anything to do with spirituality uh, or past life, past life karma. Uh, or some creative project as well, because we tend to create in solitude. So that also becomes a uh, 12th house issue because uh, this will. And of course, I forgot to say that uh, it has to be Aquarian in nature. So it has to be um, connected to science or maybe connected to astrology as well. Uh, could be uh, an internet based something because uh, Aquarius rules internet or something to do with humanity or humanitarian goal or some um, something like that. Okay, like, let's see the nodes in Aries and Libra. Uh, so that is happening in your financial axis. So you will be having some major endings and great new beginnings uh, that feel likely fated as you don't have much, much control over those situations. But just trust the universe that is taking you uh, on the right path that you have chosen before entering this earthly reality. So with, uh, there's uh, the two parts of karma is North Node or Rahu, and the opposite it is uh, the South Node K2. And so these are two different energies. Rahu is your future karma where we tend to um, go uh, towards, and K2 is the past karma that we need to release. 
So wherever, wherever Rahu is, we tend to take more and manifest materially. So you need to learn how to create your own resources now, okay? Rahu is in your second house and you might become a little bit greedy towards uh, financial gains and towards money or towards food as well. You will try some ways to create some new uh, financial security. You may experiment new ways to have some income. You might become a little bit obsessed about money and food and try new progressive ways of earning, new progressive ways of making food, some of you. You might have some exotic possessions, your taste for food and clothes might become a little bit greedy, a little bit quirky. You, you might become a little bit materialistic even if you haven't been so much before. Now you also have to let go and sacrifice some of your resources that you have shared with a partner. You can also let go some of your emotional traumas or let go some of your debt. This is a good time to research spiritually, like uh, research um, the life after death, astrology, the occult. Okay, then let's talk about Mercury retrograde in all the fire signs. This will affect your second, sixth and tenth house, second, your financial house. This is going to happen around eclipse season. So there will be some unexpected things, unexpected uh, financial issues uh, for you, for sure. The 10th house is the house of career and the 6th house is the house of work. So Mercury retrograde will make you to uh, redo and reorganize and uh, re communicate and maybe you will resign as well this is also in the picture especially if it touches your mc um, there is uh, a chance for it so mercury retrograde the first one is going to happen in april and then the next one is going to happen in august and the last one is end of november mid-december in sagittarius so when Mercury is retrograde in uh, fire signs, we need to embrace and awaken our competitive spirits, taking risk in life, being excited about the future. You have to think about your glory, your greatness, your level of enthusiasm, and you will have to start believing that something positive can happen in your life. You want to be active to get noticed uh, for something. What fuels uh, your motivation? What makes you passionate? Now, remember, the fire can consume you so and it spreads very quickly. So be very careful. OK, so then I kept the best for last, which is Pluto in Aquarius. Uh, Pluto has already moved into Aquarius this year between March and June. So because Pluto is a scary planet, is very fearful. And the tribe's house is also the house of hidden things, secret enemies, uh, secrets, um, the subconscious mind so we're not really aware what is happening there so whatever happens there to you it's going to be uh, happening more to your dreams to your subconscious mind but physically things can happen as well so see what planets do you have there and what they rule as well and if you need further help of course uh, I'm always uh, available to be uh, booked in um, Pluto has already been this year in 2023 in Aquarius between end of March and beginning of June. So if you can recollect something in terms of secrets, in terms of behind the scenes, in terms of hospitalization, in terms of your enemies, in terms of your uh, fears, addictions, uh, if something was stirred up there, now it's going to be taken to the next level. Pluto's, uh, during the time that Pluto stays in your 12th house, you may need to face your worst fear. So I have to say that this area describes your secret enemies and Pluto is such a, a fearful planet and it thinks unearthly things that uh, you were unaware of. So now you will become aware of those things. Uh, could be They could be just psychological or spiritual fears could be psychic phenomena, increased spiritual awareness, but it also could be something to do with your creativity that you were unaware of. So that's the positive side. Um, so in the positive hand, Pluto can usher a period of enhanced creativity um, and the isolation can often happen uh, during this transit and, and the isolation can be welcomed. In fact, you might be 
even seeking it. The power of silence in your life enables you to reach unknown depths in your art, in your writing, in your music, in your healing therapies, um, in your, I don't know, in your meditation. You can become extremely psychic too. You are transforming your inner psyche and sometimes you don't even know it. So there could be some deep therapies with a powerful therapy such as an astrologer a psychic a healer maybe you will do some past life regressions and uh, maybe do some investigation that can be very very healing uh, it can indicate some uh, time spending abroad in fire places uh, where being alone being in solitude it's very healing uh, it's actually very good for your soul's evolution uh, but you might be um you know, getting close to the personal with your shadow and uh, meditations can be taken to another level, to very, very deep levels like Tantra and, and that sort of uh, type of very intense deep meditations, uh, extrasensory powerful experiences or really heightened intuition, downloading, channeling powerful insights and knowledge. All of this could be in the picture. You will transform your life behind the scenes and you will encompass your soul's purpose. There could be some in-depth secret love affair that opens you up spiritually. On the negative side, you do need to take care of your mental health because some irrational fears uh, will definitely come up. If you have had any, now they will come up for sure. They will come to the surface and they show up as trauma. Uh, there could be some hospitalization due to the illness, okay? So that's also a possibility. There could be some psychic invasion, astral breaches of invisible entities. Um, so, you know, watch out for them. Get some help, some spiritual help. Some old painful secrets might come into light and you will have to deal with them for sure. Uh, you can pick up immediately other people's negative intentions uh, that can be unsettling, but also it will show you that you can actually trust your own intuition. Uh, there could be some nightmares, some vivid unsettling dreams that are connected to the past. And so, you know, be aware of that as well. But just, as I said, just uh, have some healing, have some therapy, have some helps, have some psychic spiritual help as well. Um, because now all of these are going to be able to help you. All right, so this is all I have for you, dear Pisces. I wish you a very happy new year and a fantastic 2024. All the best. Thank you. Bye-bye.